Dad, will you tell me a story? The boy begged. It's time for bed now, Malcolm. His father said sternly. Please. Malcolm smiled, the warmest smile possible, a smile he knew his father could not resist. Well, all right then. Any preferences tonight? Malcolm thought deliberately. Come on now, or the story will be very short. Tell me about Earth, Dad. His father's expression became gloomy. Then he composed himself. All right then. I think it is about time you got to know a bit more about it. You are old enough now. Almost twelve years ago, I embarked the spaceship, the one that you have seen in Town Square. On that spaceship were two hundred and fourteen people. As you know, that was the only ship that made it to our home, to Mars. I inhabited Earth for thirty-two years. I was born in twenty twenty-one, the same year as your mother. I had a relatively quiet and carefree youth. Your grandfather was one of the wealthiest men in the world, you know. Malcolm interrupted his father. What does wealthiest mean, Dad? Being wealthy means you have a lot of money. In my dad's case, more than we could ever spend. But you never have to worry about money. It doesn't exist anymore. You know when mom visits people and makes up laws with her colleagues. In return, we get potatoes from someone, other vegetables, or a knitted sweater. I repair people's electricity or computers, and we always get something back in return. Or we lend our stuff to each other. It's called bartering. It's really easy and carefree. Malcolm had not really thought about it. To him, it was natural. His dad continued, "We could buy stuff with my dad's money, everything we wanted. We were a family of privilege. That means we had many advantages in comparison to other people. And your grandfather was a man of high status. He was well respected throughout the world, as he called Earth when he spoke of the entire community of diverse people and species living on it." Dad was an innovator. Malcolm looked puzzled. That means he was always one of the first to come up with something new, something people didn't even know they wanted or needed. Your grandfather developed and built the spaceship in Town Square, the ship that brought us here. My father's company, Space Z, developed great products. It started out with producing satellites, which were more efficient and sustainable than the ones that were already circling the orbit. The company made a fortune with the satellites, allowing my dad to pursue his more audacious dreams to build a better and more ecological world. He cared for our planet, and he was a strong advocate for a greener planet, reducing vehicles running on gasoline, promoting vegetarianism, altering the meat industry. He was a compassionate man. Unfortunately for him and the rest of humanity, his efforts alone couldn't avoid Earth's deterioration. He knew that. Malcolm's eyes became bigger, showing a hint of pride. And Malcolm wondered about something else. What did you do when you were my age, Dad? What was playing on Earth like? Malcolm's father thought about this for a while. Memories flashing before his eyes. He grinned. Well, there were a great many things you could do on Earth. When I was your age, I was in school like you. Only my school was bigger and had more students. I liked to play games on my phone. You could speak to someone who wasn't there with you, as well as playing with my friends. We hung out like you do with Brian. Before school, I swam in the pool or the ocean for about an hour every day. At that time, I wanted to become a professional swimmer. You know, what is swimming? Malcolm asked. Imagine you are in a large space with only water, and you can move around going from one side to the other. It is a great exercise, and it relieves your muscles from any tension. You do know about the oceans, though, right? Yes, there was where you had boats that drove to other places, and there were beasts in them. Almost, they sailed through other places, gliding through the water, and yes, there were fish and other types of animals that lived in the oceans. Thousands upon thousands of species lived there. Are they all dead? I'm not sure, Mal. You know, when I was a teenager, things changed quickly. Overfishing led to a disturbance in the ecosystem. Water levels increased due to climate change. Oceans were polluted with oil and plastic. The Earth provided everything for us, and we repaid it. With disrespect, Malcolm pulled a sad face. Even though he could not understand all his father was saying, he felt that it was bad. He would have loved to try swimming and see fish. He had only seen fish in some of the books that were brought from Earth. Did you have to wear a suit when you were outside, Dad? His dad laughed. After a while, he answered, "We didn't have to wear a suit outside. It was liberating. Walking in the woods, playing with friends. We never had to worry about our oxygen supply." There was plenty of it. 
trees and plants provided all the oxygen and the woods lived different types of animals did you know we had animals at home too yes dad i know my dad bought a ranch for us to live on sometimes we went to the house in the city when dad had important business to do but we spent most of the time on the ranch we had cows who provided milk for us and chickens for eggs i know those malcolm said in excitement they are here in the eco farm i like eggs yes we brought cows chickens pigs lambs and other animals to our settlement it was all part of your grandfather's great plan for our journey into space not only did we bring cattle we also brought books maps art and other earthly inventions in order for us to always remember however it is time for bed now malcolm tomorrow will be mars day i can continue the story after tomorrow's celebration good night now